My beloved brothers and sisters, it is an honor to address you on this Sabbath day. I am humbled by the assignment to speak to the millions of Latter-day Saints and our friends across the world. In preparation for this sacred opportunity, I prayed and pondered to learn about your personal needs and what message the Lord wanted me to give. Your needs are great and varied. Each of you is a unique child of God. God knows you individually. He sends messages of encouragement, correction, and direction fitted to you and to your needs. To discover what God would have me add to this conference, I read messages of his servants in scripture and in past conferences. I received an answer to my prayer as I read the words of Alma, a great servant of the Lord in the Book of Mormon, quote, Oh, that I were an angel and could have the wish of mine heart that I might go forth and speak with the trump of God, with a voice to shake the earth and cry repentance unto every people. Yea, I would declare unto every soul as with the voice of thunder, repentance and the plan of redemption, that they should repent and come unto God, that there might not be more sorrow upon all the face of the earth. But behold, I am a man and do sin in my wish, for I ought to be content with the things which the Lord hath allotted unto me. Close quote. And then I found in Alma's reflection the direction for which I had been praying. Quote, For behold, the Lord doth grant unto all nations of their own nation and tongue to teach his word, yea, in wisdom, all that he seeth fit that they should have. Therefore we see that the Lord doth counsel in wisdom according to that which is just and true." Close quote. As I read that message from a servant of God, my errand for today became clear. God sends messages and authorized messengers to his children. I am to build trust in God and his servants enough that we will go out and obey his counsel. He wants that because he loves us and wants our happiness, and he knows how a lack of trust in him brings sadness. That lack of trust has brought sorrow to Heavenly Father's children from before the world was created. We know through the revelations of God to the prophet Joseph Smith that many of our brothers and sisters in the pre-mortal world rejected the plan for our mortal life presented by our Heavenly Father and His eldest son, Jehovah. We don't know all the reasons for Lucifer's terrible success in inciting that rebellion. However, one reason is clear. Those who lost the blessing of coming into mortality lacked sufficient trust in God to avoid eternal misery. That sad pattern of lack of trust in God has persisted since the creation. Now, I will be careful in giving examples from the lives of God's children since I do not know all the reasons for their lack of faith enough to trust him. Many of you have studied the moments of crisis in their lives. Jonah, for instance, not only rejected the message from the Lord to go to Nineveh, but went the other way. Naaman could not trust the direction of the Lord's prophet to bathe in a river to allow the Lord to heal his leprosy, feeling the simple task was beneath his dignity. The Savior invited Peter to leave the safety of a boat to walk to him 
across water. We ache for him and see our own needs for greater trust in God as we hear the account, quote, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? We can take courage from the fact that Peter came to trust the Lord enough to stay faithful in his service all the way to his martyrdom. The young Nephi in the Book of Mormon stirs in us a desire to develop trust in the Lord to obey his commandments, however hard they appear to us. Nephi faced danger and possible death when he said these words of trust that we can and must feel steadily in our hearts. Quote, I will go and do the things which the Lord hath commanded, for I know that the Lord giveth no commandments unto the children of men, save he shall prepare a way for them that they may accomplish the thing which he commandeth them. Close quote. That trust comes from knowing God. More than any other people on earth, we have, through the glorious events of the restoration of the gospel, felt the peace that the Lord offered his people with the words, be still and know that I am God. My heart is filled with gratitude for what God has revealed about himself that we might trust him. For me, it began in 1820 with a young boy in a grove of trees on a farm in the state of New York. The boy, Joseph Smith Jr., walked among the trees to a secluded spot. He knelt to pray with complete trust that God would answer his pleading to know what he should do to be cleansed and saved through the atonement of Jesus Christ. Each time I read his account, my trust in God and his servants expands. Quote, I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head, above the brightness of the sun, which descended gradually until it fell upon me. It no sooner appeared than I found myself delivered from the enemy which held me bound. When the light rested upon me, I saw two personages whose brightness and glory defy all description standing above me in the air. One of them spake unto me, calling me by name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved.